Welcome to Tell Me Your Story, New Paradigms for a New World. I say that at the beginning of almost every program. There have been a few exceptions, uh, but to today um, we are going to take a look at um, what's going on in our world uh, from a um, conscious, subconscious, uh, maybe an intuitive perspective. We have as a returning guest to our program, a good friend of mine, my therapist as well. Uh, no, we won't be revealing uh, a lot of uh, secrets. I probably already revealed them on this program, and that's just kind of the way I am. Peter Wright is back with us. He's a certified hypnotherapist right here in Santa Barbara with more than 25 years of experience, and he's also one of only 50 board-certified past-life regression therapists in the country. In addition, Peter is certified as a life-between-lives hypnotherapist, and he's skilled in spirit releasement. Releasement. Peter, welcome to the program. How are you? Very well. Thanks so much for having me back. Uh, spirit releasement. Now we're going to talk about that one as well. And uh, you're also uh, you also help more than two thousand. You've helped more than two thousand clients through hypnotherapy via Zoom, phone, Skype, or in person, uh, as well as offering uh, a free thirty minute consultation to prospective clients via Zoom or phone. We'll give out your information here shortly. Uh, you've got a lot of letters. It's almost the alphabet behind your name here. <clears throat> you also have a website which is Insights From Within. I want to give all this information out now so that people can uh, uh, jot it down and what have you. We'll also be linked to your website, as we are with the other interviews that we've done. And I take it that this phone number, local phone number, is one that uh, we can give out here on the program so people can get in touch with you? Absolutely. And that's 805-770-5200, 805-770-5200. Um, Let's. Uh, I want to jump back to the thing that I I paused on, and that was spirit releasement. Um, what does that mean? What is that? Spirit releasement involves uh, helping clients release energies, intruders, if you will, that have entered into their um, auras uh, from because the aura became weak. If you consider that the physical body is protected by the immune system, we know that. The spirit body is protected by the aura. And on occasion, the aura can become weak due to trauma, due to um, too much alcohol or pot, or having a big heart, wanting to save the world and not uh, protecting yourself. And so when the aura becomes weak, um, there are three types of intruders that can enter into your energy field. And so I find that with my clients, um, many of them have these intruders that are affecting their thoughts, feelings, attitudes, and beliefs. Hmm. Wow. Now, it seems to me that that is pretty darn prevalent in this day and age, um, especially considering the way some people are, are um, shall we say, behaving, not just feeling or thinking, but just the a their actions in, in and of themselves uh, seem to indicate that, boy, they're just, they're really way out of balance. Now, bear in mind, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. I'm not passing judgment here. Uh, it's just that that's just the observation. Um, and, and I have to say, I want to throw this in here. Um, we've had this discussion, probably you and I have, but I, I've had it on this program with a number of people over the last few months. Uh, in regards to the, uh, the, two, uh, the two concepts of free will versus predestination. Uh, you know, there are those who feel that on a, on a microcosmic level, if you will, we have free will. But a macrocosmic level, you know, the universe is going to unfold the way it's going to unfold, whether you like it or not. It's kind of like the sun will rise and set, all right? You have no free will to say, no, I'm not going to let it rise today. It, it doesn't work that way. Uh, so I'm wondering... Uh, obviously, people will come to you, Peter, because they're looking for uh, answers. They're looking. They've, they've read about you on your website. Uh, they've heard about you from interviews such as this. And they want to get themselves back into balance. They want to raise their consciousness. Maybe they want to, as we've said many times on this program, they want to change the world. We want to change the world. But then again... The way I want to change it may not be the way you want it, Peter. So now we've got, you know, maybe possibly uh, conflicting 
wills going on there. I mean, this, this opens up a whole can of worms in terms of the conversation, but let's talk a little bit about that in terms of uh, in terms of obviously a person coming to you, they're ex exercising their free will saying, I, I, I need a change in my life. I want a change in my life. And how do you, how do you, uh, how do you deal with that? Well, let me first give you my perspective on uh, free will and choice. Um, what I've discovered in my 25 years as a hypnotherapist is that earth is a free will zone. One of the few places in the cosmos that is free will. Souls come to earth to practice making choices. They have free will. And we learn through the choices that we make. Um, so that's why we come back time and time and time again in order for our souls to evolve. Eventually, perhaps through all the choices that we make, we can eventually get to a place of, of forgiveness, love, forgiveness of ourselves, love for ourselves, forgiveness of others, love for others. I think that's just part of the soul's journey that each of us is on to become better people in the overall scheme of things. Um, so with that as a jumping off point, I find that my clients are approaching me because they have issues that um, fears, phobias, um, pains, um, emotional upset, uh, relationship problems, uh, fear of death. And so something is not right for them. And I find that by spending time right up front with a free consultation for half hour 45 minutes we can briefly talk about their issues and i can share with them my perspective on how i work with clients using hypnosis to help them quickly um, connect with their own guidance heart higher self and other guides from the non-physical realm and then bring those resources into partner with us during the session to make the changes that the client is seeking from the standpoint of their guidance, because they know where we need to go for the highest good of the client. Now, you and I, we've been connected for what, about five years or so? Exactly. And, uh, and I've been through a number of um, uh, hypno hypnotherapy sessions. One of them, of course, uh, the one that I really enjoyed, not that I didn't, did not the others, but the one I really enjoyed was the, the LBL or Life Between Lives uh, therapy. And uh, that just fascinated me to no end because uh, it took me back to the life prior to this one. And uh, it was in those pioneer days. And uh, that was a great life. And I've sort of incorporated some of that into this lifetime because of where I live now and the work that I do uh, up on the hill above Santa Barbara. Um, not so much maybe here as we are, are doing these programs. But... Um, it was like, man, I would love to go back to that. That would be just wonderful to to have a farm and and some 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 uh, livestock. Maybe not necessarily a ranch with you know running cattle, but you know growing uh, food for the community that I I live near, uh, the small community and so forth. And knowing just about everybody there. Maybe there are only a few hundred people in this particular uh, community. Uh, as a matter of fact. Um, I don't know if you if you watch much television, Peter, but there's this. I think it's a wonderful program. I don't see it all the time. Uh, it's called 1883, and it is the uh, precursor. It is the prequel, if you will, uh, to the television series uh, with Kevin Costner uh, called, I believe, it's a Yellowstone. Mm -hmm. And basically, it's the back. It gives you now the backstory on how the Duttons acquired their land and, and, and the relationships that they have in the present day, as well as some of the, what we'll call karmic <laughs> um, issues uh, that, they are, uh, that they are dealing with as well. Um, when you take someone through that, and by the way, this is th this LBL work, uh, this is uh, f from a Dr. Newton, correct? Correct. Yeah. Yes. And share with us a little bit uh, from your, not only just your experience, but your, your knowledge and education. Share with us a little bit about what LBL or Life Between Lives therapy is and maybe what it isn't. Uh, Dr. Newton worked with over 5,000 clients over a 20 year period and discovered a protocol to take them into the spirit realm to meet with their council of elders, their council of elders individually. Um, to get answers to questions about they have about their current lifetime. So during the, um, I invite clients to bring with them to the session a list of questions. 
they'd like to ask their council of elders, for example, um, what's my purpose in this in this lifetime? And how am I doing? Um, why did I have an abusive uh, parents? Um, what about these particular issues in my life? Um, and I also ask the client to bring a cast of characters. In other words, key people in the client's life, uh, first names, and then three adjectives to describe the relationship with that person. Um, so I then take them into a very deep level of hypnosis. It's about a 45 minute induction um, where they go uh, to a very relaxed place. And then from there we go back from their present age into the womb. And it gives them a chance to re-experience what it was like in their mother's womb. From there, we go to the most recent past life and explore that past life for maybe 10, 15 minutes to find out what were the key turning points in that lifetime. How did you die? What was your dying thought? You then take me with you into the spirit realm. You've done this hundreds of times before. And so there's a guided visualization into the spirit realm where we're met by your guide, your um, uh, key key contact in, in the spirit realm. Um, so on arriving, um, we then can go to meet with your soul cluster, your uh, home room in the spirit realm, where you can look around the room and see who's there, who's in your life today. That's where that cast of characters that you brought to the session helps me figure out who these people are. And we can help you do some, uh, by con conversing with them, um, find out even more about issues that the two of you are currently working on. Mm -hmm. That council of elders, no, excuse me, that soul cluster is um, right now with you in the spirit realm while you are here on earth with a number of them in your life today. Um, from there we go to meet with your council of elders. How do we get there? What does the council chamber look like? You tell me, this is your experience. And I asked the questions that you brought with you of, to them, plus a lot of other questions along the way that can give you even more information about your soul's journey. Then you can go to the place of body selection where you chose your present body. Why did you choose this body? And what bodies did you turn down and why? So it's a very uh, extensive look at your soul's journey. It takes about three and a half to four hours. And of a lot can be found out about uh, this particular lifetime and all those key people in your life today and also a particular past life to give you more information. Having gone through it, I think a lot of people, um, myself having gone through it, uh, a lot of people are skeptical about uh, hypnotism uh, and uh, hypnotherapy because uh, they think that uh, they might think that um, uh, you are leading them and you are uh, it's like uh, you know it's 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 along those lines of, so how many times did you beat your wife you know kind of thing uh, well, first of all I don't have a wife uh, second of all I didn't beat her because I don't have one and so on and so forth you do not do that you do not put anything in and the other element too is that you as the uh, client if you will uh, the hypnotized you are consciously aware of everything that's going on yes your eyes are closed yes you are in a hypnotic state that is true but this is a conscious hypnosis correct and uh, explain the difference between the two as far as maybe uh, dispelling some of these uh, uh, misnomers about hypnotism thank you um, hyp hypnosis is just simply focused concentration where you're fully aware of everything that's going on around you you hear the traffic outside, but hopefully you're sharing with me what's going on inside of you. Because I believe so many of our answers are within us if we can just get out of the way. How <laughs> <laughs> you help you get out of the way? Yeah. You ever cried while watching a sad film? You've been in trance, reading a good book, watching television, daydreaming. We go in and out of trance every day. It's easy to get there. It's very relaxing when you're there. And when you're there, we can easily connect with your heart, your higher self, and all the guidance available to you. 
Now, here's here's an interesting question I want to put to you. Uh, but first, I want to let our listeners know that we're talking with Peter Wright. Uh, he is a local hypnotherapist here in Santa Barbara. Uh, in addition, Peter is certified as a Life Between Life hypnotherapist, as I mentioned earlier. And we just talked a little bit about uh, spirit uh, re- uh, releasement. Uh, he also has helped over 2,000 people, clients, through hypnotherapy, uh, through the various modalities that we have available to us. And he offers a free 30-minute consultation to, pers- to prospective clients, you who might be listening via Zoom, phone, Skype, whatever uh, form. Uh, you can go to insightsfromwithin.com. That's insightsfromwithin.com. And Peter's uh, access, if you would like to give him a call, you can do so, 805 805- <clears throat> 770-5200, that 805-770-5200, or uh, they can email you as well, Peter, uh, at uh, pqright, R-I-G-H-T, P-Q-R-I-G-H-T at AOL.com, correct? W-R-I-G-H-T. W, what did I, I, okay, yes, there's a W, this is uh, not right and wrong. <laughs> All right, so that's uh, P-Q-W-R-I-G-H-T at A-O-L dot com. This is Tell Me Your Story. I'm Richard Dugan, your host, and I'm here with Peter Wright, and we're talking about the work that he does to help you and I, because I am actually uh, a good, we are good friends as well as uh, a therapist. Uh, now, I have a question in regards to this process of going back to previous lifetimes but do is it i mean there's the theory that we are living multiple lives even as you and i speak that i've got maybe in other quote unquote dimensions now is that anything that you touch upon through this process is or is that uh, something a little bit further uh, into another um, another uh, study, if you will. I find that through hypnosis, we can go uh, uh, into other dimensions, if you will. Mm-hmm. Uh, for all my clients, I take them on a guided visualization into trance, into hypnosis, and then on another guided visualization up into the light, up into the fifth dimension, where all possibilities exist for us. We can go anywhere, anyhow, any when, any why, using your imagination, because your soul speaks to your imagination. And your soul isn't making things up, rather it's translating what is inside of you during the session into first thought, first feeling, first image, first voice. So I invite you, the client, to be my tour guide, be mm-hmm. my order, and share with me whatever is happening as that session unfolds through your imagination. So by doing so, being up in the fifth dimension, it's very easy for us to connect with your heart, your higher self, and all your guidance, whether you know of it or not. So we invite that guidance to come forth right up front, partner with them, because they know everything there is to know about you from this life and past lives, as I said earlier, and they show up. For example, we may call upon um, Archangel Michael, or your grandmother may show up, or a spirit guide may show up, but they're eager to work with us because while you've brought your to-do list to the session, they brought their to-do list to the session. Mm. Their to-do list takes precedence over yours because they know where we need to go first, whether it's this life, a past life, or someplace else. So we both get out of the way, trusting first thought, first feeling, first image, first voice coming from both of us, being inspired by them, and magic happens in the session. Hmm. I have to say that uh, from my perspective, that's the be- I think that's a great description, magic happens. Um, I'm wondering, especially when it comes to this aspect of life between lives, but maybe just in general, uh, when, you, when you take someone into the hypnotic state, uh, and they are, again, as I was, completely consciously aware, um, have you found because when we're in a conscious state non-hypnotic conscious state and you're just sitting there chatting okay i want you to share with me whatever it is and the mind will want to edit Mm -hmm. will want to withhold certain things because maybe they're embarrassing or whatever the reason is they just don't want to share those things whereas in the hypnotic state 
is there still the mental struggle or ha has the mind sort of been um, placated to say, look, you know, we'll, we're going to be gone here for a little while, but we're coming back to you. You're a, I need you in my life. You're a friend. Okay, I want to work together with you, but right now I need to go over here. So could you maybe just turn your volume down a little bit so that I'm not so distracted and, and, and so forth? I find that uh, we have left brain versus right brain, of course. And I find that for me, um, with the left brain, we're working with the conscious mind, the memory, and the ego. But it's all within the three-dimensional model of this is all there is, folks. There's nothing more than what I can experience right now in the third dimension. Well, there is so much more. So in hypnosis, we're working with um, your emotions, this life and past lives your physical body, what's happened to it in this life and past lives. Um, we're working with um, your heart and your higher self. Um, so for my, uh, and, and all the guidance available to us. Mm -hmm. So during a session, therefore, um, I, we, have, we have as well the left brain versus right brain in terms of um, left brain, those from the left brain are often very analytical. So working with your, uh, your brain, your head energy, um, which, which is what keeps the body functioning, the heart moving, for, you know, the heart uh, um, pumping and so on. Um, and we're working with um, those aspects of you that are, are present to help you see the, the third dimensional reality. Um, but so for my left brain clients, especially the, the, um, the engineers, um, the accountants, right up front, I invite them to ask their left brain to sit on their left shoulder throughout the session, take careful notes, and shut up. <laughs> I ask the right brain to join us for the session um, and invite their friends to come down from the non-physical realm and lead the session on behalf of you, the client. They do, and they do. So it's a very different paradigm we're working with, one that is focusing on the heart rather than on the head, because the heart is connected to your own spiritual journey, your own soul's journey. The head is connected to the third dimension. Mm. Peter Wright is my guest, and uh, we are talking about the work that he does right here in Santa Barbara, hypnotherapy. Uh, and... Um, I want to talk to you as we continue here on the program uh, about uh, your background and, and why this is so interesting to you. But let me let you know, folks, that you are listening to and watching Tell Me Your Story, New Paradigms for a New World. I'm Richard Dugan, your host, and it's a pleasure to have Peter Peter Wright with us here on the program to to talk about this particular area. Uh, what is it that has us, that has so intrigued you about hypnotherapy and the work that you do today that has that uh, that that brought took brought you down this path when i was a kid i have an older brother three years older he had a comic book collection i may be eight years old he's 11 and there was a superman comic book that attracted my attention back then there were ads in the last few pages of comic books for different products and in this particular superman comic book there was an ad for a book called how to hypnotize your friends. And I thought, whoa, that's so cool. <laughs> so I went up to my father and I showed him the ad and I said, Dad, I really want to buy this book, but I don't have any money. Can you help me? And my father looked at the ad and looked at his loving son and said, that's the stupidest idea I've ever heard. <laughs> so it would have killed it for 15 years. But I got a, a college degree and came back to Washington, D.C., and began working in the nonprofit world, but also began exploring hypnosis on the side. So eventually I got certified um, as a uh, hypnotherapist and a board certified as a past life regression therapist and so on, and began seeing clients. So I've been doing this work for 25 years. And my father came around and said that he was very proud of me for <laughs> making the career change. So all is well from that perspective. Well, now, um, you, you had to, uh, you had to go through your own 
hypnotherapy sessions as well in terms of getting your education? Absolutely. My gosh, yes. Well, sorry, what know. was it that, I mean, I, I, it, seems as, it seems as though that would just be something that you'd have to do. Uh, it'd be very difficult for a, an instructor or facilitator to necessarily grade you because because the, the, the hypnotherapy uh, one who goes through it like myself there is no pass fail you get out of it what you get out of it so was it just an experience that you were required to have so you would understand better what your clients would be going through these trading sessions with other uh, hypnotherapists in the, in the training program so that we could practice different tools and techniques and experience what they were like firsthand. So once is the client, once is the therapist to, to build upon um, different protocols that we learned that can be very successful in helping our clients uh, release what no longer serves them. Just out of curiosity, what was your major in college? I was a poli sci and history major. Okay. Oh, poli sci and history. I like that. And history would actually um, be a, a rather appropriate associative study when you're talking with uh, your clients and taking them through their past lives, would it not? Yes, absolutely. Um, I'm fascinated by history and it's been fun to experience, if you will, history through the eyes of my clients who go back into a particular past life that um, is valuable for them to explore because in doing so what we're doing is we're going into the story finding out what happened to you in that particular past life the relationships and from that what went wrong because um, often things don't work out the way they that we anticipate that they will so that uh, things are wrong in your life we're and so i'm looking for the defeats where do things go wrong for you and why? Mm. Um, we then go to the day of your death. What was your dying thought? The Tibetan Buddhists, for example, believe that a dying thought can have a major impact on an upcoming lifetime. So if you die of starvation, there's never enough food. Uh. <laughs> there's plenty of food, but you know, uh-uh, there's never enough. Mm. So we're clues in those final thoughts. I then invite you to um, move from uh, move out of your physical body into your spirit body, looking down on the scene where you died, and then to move into the bardo, that in-between place between lifetimes that the Tibetan Buddhists talk about. And again, you're there in your imagination, where you have an opportunity to invite anyone from that life we just explored, with whom you have unfinished business, to join you in your imagination and speak your truth as you were in that body then to them and hear their responses. Mm. Often this can create an opening for shifts, changes, forgiveness, and the like. And that's where the healing can occur. We're talking with Peter right here on Tell Me Your Story. I'm Richard Dugan, your host, and I thank you so much for staying with us, folks, as we continue our conversation with Peter, who is a, a local Santa Barbara hypnotherapist. Um, when you, I mean, I mean, I still remember, um, and I, I must assume from my perspective that these were my last thoughts or words in my previous, my last lifetime, where um, I was uh, leaning back in my chair, my hat was tipped back, and I put my feet up on the rails. Do not know why I keep going into that little twangy thing there, you know. Uh, must have been the, must have been where I was living at the time, and I just thought, it's been a good life. It has been a good life. And then I, I, I left. Nice, peaceful, easy. Um, as some have described it, I took off the coat, you know, and um, I went into the spirit realm. And maybe that's why uh, I have uh, the, the perspective I do, in spite of maybe some of the bullying that I went through during school, uh, which may be tempered, if you will, uh, my, um, uh, my, my demeanor. Uh, not to hold uh, re resentment. Uh, I was actually saddened when I heard that uh, one of the bullies uh, that uh, harassed me when I was in school passed away uh, in their in their fifties. I mean, we were all about the same age. So, I mean, I'm 61, and they have they passed away, and and I, I you know 
part of me thought, I wonder if he, he ever thought about me and, and, and what he put me through. Uh, but then again, it was, there was a little bit of sadness. Like, that's too bad, you know, my God, because I'm feeling really great. I still feel young at heart, and he's gone, and, and that's too bad. And then you have to wonder, too, about his contract, about his past life, and, and, and the, the experiences that he chose to have. Uh, I often wonder, I know I've never been to any, I don't know about you, but I've never been to any of my class reunions from high school. Um, I just had no interest because, maybe because of that. But I've just found it such a waste of time and energy to hold those kind of resentments, you know, to, I mean, and we see it all the time, both in real life as well as in pro television and movies, about somebody who their entire lifetime is spent um, getting even with somebody and it's like oh my heavens what, what's the point because it doesn't change the past and 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 quite honestly I consider myself not that not that I would have uh, maybe I did do this I prescribe I, I had it in my contract that I would go through it but it's like uh, I wish I hadn't gone through it but I did and it's made me who I am today you know um, do you find that when people go through uh, one of these sessions with you, and, and maybe sometimes it's multiple, because I would think that, that you don't necessarily have resolution in just one session, although I suppose that's entirely possible, um, that they start making choices and, boy, their lives just take off and, and they are just, they say, wow. If I had only known that years ago, I would have made different choices. But I know it now, and now I can re I can make some choices. I'm going to do this, and 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 they just they they thrive. Well, I find that I see a client for two hours, and then we have an hour long follow up session about a week later to talk about the, to what happened in that initial two hours. And what I found using the approach that I use is that a lot could be accomplished in this two hour session. Um, Plus, I help you connect not only with your heart and higher self and guidance, but I give you tools to use to uh, begin to connect with them maybe daily on a regular basis to ask for more guidance and support. Hmm. So that with uh, by working in a more metaphysical way with spirit, uh, with your heart, higher self and guidance, um, what we're doing is that we're gaining their wisdom helping you to make choices. Um, as an example, um, and this proved to me that it was real, I had a, uh, went to a, a workshop several years ago as a participant, and there was another hypnotherapist present, and we engaged in idle chatter before the workshop began. During one of the breaks, he shared with me on his cell phone part of a video of one of his client's sessions. Now, his client was in hypnosis, and they had invited the client's Uncle Harold to join them in the imagination of the client. Uncle Harold had passed on years before, but in the video of the session, you could see a little photograph of Uncle Harold dancing right next to the client's face. There was no photograph of Uncle Harold actually in the session room, but Uncle Harold was present, thank you very much, which proved to me that everybody is available to us in the trance state. Wow. We're currently alive in physical body, through your imagination, your soul speaks through your imagination, or they've passed on, we invite them to join us from the spirit realm in your imagination, or they are um, ascended masters, archangels, uh, spirit guides from, this, from the non-physical realm, or their past life personalities, um, as we saw in the Bardo with the, um, as I mentioned, connecting with those from the past life to help you come to closure with them. So everybody's available to us, in the trance state, allowing you to come to closure with them. Uh, as a more recent example with a client, um, let's say dad was, uh, dad was an aging alcoholic, and it was really difficult for you and your siblings and mom to deal with his drinking. Um, in fact, your elementary school years were awash with chaos at home because of dad. Um, but fortunately, mom and dad divorced when you were 12 years old, You've not heard from dad in years. You don't want to hear from dad. You're still angry at him. But the damage was done. You're now 35 years of age, angry at dad. And whenever you're around adults who are using 
too much alcohol, your inner child, um, you know, little Richard gets upset because it remembers what life was like growing up in that household with dad. Uh, we all have an inner child. We ignore them because they really don't exist, but they exist. And when they're unhappy, we're unhappy. So during the session in the trance state, I invite you, Richard, to invite dad to join us in your imagination and speak your truth to dad, letting him know how difficult it was growing up in that household. Often dad gets it and apologizes to you. Again, this is through your imagination, but he is truly present. Um, but let's say he doesn't apologize. Let's say as you're talking to dad, you share it with me. Dad just turned his back on me, crossed his arms, said it was mom's fault, not his. Well, we invite dad's higher self to join us. So we have dad, his higher self, you, your higher self, and little Richard in your lap. What often will happen is that dad's higher self will say to you, dad's not ready to take responsibility for his actions, but he's going to have to do that later in this life or an upcoming lifetime. But can you, through your compassion, forgive the person, not the action? Because dad was doing the best he could do. He didn't do very well, but that was the best he could do. And by forgiving the person, not the action, allows you to let go of a lot of that bad stuff that you've been carrying with you for far too long. A good friend of mine talks about cowboy logic. What is cowboy logic? When your horse dies, get off it. Don't drag the dead carcass behind you. <laughs> and I find so many of us are dragging our coulda, woulda, shoulda behind us. Hmm. Supposed to. No. Forgive yourself. Love yourself. Let go of that stuff. And that idiot over there, she made your life hell. So try and throw a little. But maybe it was karmic. Maybe in a past life, she treated you the same way you're treating her now. Yeah. Forgive her, love her, let it go, yeah. because that's all the past. The pres power that is in the present, looking forward to the future, when you may have a similar challenge, you screwed up on in the past, you remember what you did then, and create a more positive outcome that can help you move forward in your life. So to summarize, much of my work with clients is helping them to get let go of the thoughts, feelings, attitudes, and beliefs that keep you stuck keep you unable to move forward. And we can quickly help you move forward using hypnosis during a session. Peter writes, my guest, uh, CPLT, CHL, uh, I beg your pardon, CHT, as well as LBLT. Uh, that is a certified hypnotherapist, life between lives therapist. What is CPLT? A certified past life regression therapist. Board past certified. life. And that's Insights from Within, ladies and gentlemen. That's InsightsFromWithin.com. Uh, and, of course, Peter is a, th a hypnotherapist right here in the Santa Barbara area. But he is available worldwide via all of the wonderful modalities that we have available to us. You can give him a call if you'd like to, 805-770-5200, 805-770-5200. Email is pqwright at aol.com. That's pq. W R I G H T at AOL dot com. And this is Tell Me Your Story. I'm Richard Dugan, your host, and it's really a pleasure to have Peter on the program today. You know, it's uh, very interesting from my perspective, Peter, that um, if anybody had the um, stalking in uh, in as uh, uh, ca uh, capabilities but also the initiative uh, to follow me doing my interviews over the past 40 plus years they could write my unauthorized biography because i've shared so much about myself uh, uh some some personal some not so personal um everybody knows uh, who's listened to this program for any length of time knows that yes i i'm uh, uh, i have i used to have uh, type 2 diabetes don't anymore uh i have been diagnosed and still monitor my blood pressure because of uh, a diagnosis of high blood pressure uh but um you know we all have our conditions i had my gallbladder ripped out uh in uh, july of 2021 um, uh, it was part of the Olympic Games, and I scored a gold medal in the gallbladder clean and jerk. Um, I asked the surgeon, though, could you take out my my appendix too? Because uh, they say that's that, that that doesn't do anything. But she says no, we don't do twofers. So um, didn't didn't get that done. But 
the fact of the matter is that they have heard about my stories, my, we'll call them foibles, my peccadillos, if you will. I want to ask you about this concept of uh, right and wrong or mistakes. I was challenged not long ago about that. So, well, what about all of your mistakes, Richard? And out of the blue came the phrase, I have never made a mistake in my life. I have had learning experiences. Now, when you talked about other people having done things to you as you were growing up or in a past life, and as you say, and my parents the same way, they did the best they could with what they knew and had at, at hand at the time. Um, you have a different perspective. It's almost like walking a mile in that person's shoes, so to speak. Um, but if if I haven't made any mistakes, I, there's no there's no forgiveness that I need to be giving myself because the process was about learning. I mean, uh, if I get a D or an F on a test in school, I don't walk up to the t to teacher and say, "Could you please forgive me for 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 getting this F?" or "I forgive you for giving me this F," even if it was justified. The process is about learning. It's about you know understanding how and why two plus two is four or how and why we have silent letters in our language. So talk to us a little bit about <clears throat> coming to grips with <clears throat> what we will refer to as our mistakes. Uh, as going back to what I was talking about earlier in terms of Earth being a free will zone, we're here to make choices, to make mistakes, because the choices that we make have consequences positive, negative, or neutral. But that's how we learn here on Earth. Um, if you touch the uh, hot plate and burn yourself, you realize, uh-uh, not gonna do that. Uh, so there's a, and as we talk about past lives, uh, one of my early past life regression teachers uh, spoke about the monk uh, from you know centuries ago who, really wanted to get to know God better. So he joined the monastery and was a monk for, for his life. But as his life unfolded, he grew bored with being a monk. There wasn't any um, action. There wasn't any drama to it. It was just being a monk. So uh, as he died, he said, I want to come back as a warrior. And in fact, next life, he was a warrior. And he had a wonderful time as a warrior with all the drama, all the gore, all the whatever. But after a while, he grew tired of all that action, all that, that um, blood, et cetera. And it, on his dying thought was, I need to come back as a monk. So this is the choice that we make at the end of every life is to decide what we would like to learn in the next life. What are the lessons that we have to learn? And we have the choice then to um, choose our parents, choose our uh, physical body, what we want it to look like be like, the challenges that it has, um, place of, of birth, if you will, we're very much in charge of those choices in coming back to Earth for another lifetime. But we've had hundreds of lifetimes here on Earth, if not thousands, um, so that through all these many choices that we make, slowly, as I mentioned earlier, I believe that we gradually get to the point of forgiving ourselves and others and loving ourselves and others because we're all connected. We're all connected. And doing so for the greater good of everyone is why I'm here to be as supportive to myself and others because we all have such an impact on what life is like for us now. Hmm. I know that, uh, at least from my understanding, that there is no success failure within the context of, of hypnotherapy. Uh, it is just whatever you experience. And yet, do you ever have people who uh, go through it and, and they feel as though they didn't, they didn't accomplish maybe what they mentally, they intellectually thought they should have, could have, would have, and this goes, this goes back to the fact that we drag around that bag of should haves, could haves, would haves with us. So it was just in terms of the of the session itself, they didn't accomplish what they wanted to accomplish? Yeah, exactly. Right. Um, good question. What I find is, again, you're in charge of you. And 
Um, hypnosis is simply, as I said, focused concentration. Um, but you are an active participant with me in resolving these issues. But I have no power per se uh, to, and I'm here to open the door for you to um, trust first thought, first feeling, first image, first voice. We invite your, your, your um, heart and higher self and guidance to join us. They lead the session for us, but you're still in charge. Um, so you are, because you're consciously aware of all that's going on here, I'm just inviting you to invite, to trust first thought, first feeling, first image, first voice, because that's your soul speaking through you to help you resolve these issues. But you have free choice to take the information and act upon it in a positive way or not. That's why we're here, to help you make your own choices. And of course, that's what we talk about all the time, Peter, on this program. Uh, when it comes to choices, we give people the, the choices and knowledge of those choices to help make their dreams come true. And that's part of what Tell Me Your Story is all about. I'm Richard Dugan, your host. We're here with Peter Wright, a local hypnotherapist here in the Santa Barbara area, but available to you worldwide. Uh, and uh, you can certainly get in touch with him through his website, which is Insights from within which also we'll talk about as well and you can go to his email you can send him an email pqwright at aol.com that's pqwright at aol.com or you can call him uh, locally or nationally what have you 805-770-5200 805-770-5200 and um uh, you've been doing this for uh, 25 years and uh, continuing on uh, with the website. You have all kinds of neat things available that, of course, you and I have actually worked on in terms of making available to folks uh, the tools uh, that they can utilize uh, to maybe get in touch. Maybe, maybe uh, they're not really interested in uh, an hypnotherapy session but they certainly would like uh, some tools that they might be able to use. What kind of, outside of the hypnotherapy sessions, what other kinds of tools do you have available for people to, to assist them in their, their personal uh, inner, and I'm gonna say it, inner growth? I have I offer through my website a guided visualization that's called Heal Yourself, Heal Your Life. And it takes you into trance and up into the fifth dimension where you can uh, work with um, your guidance in order to resolve issues that you're seeking to resolve um, in your life today. So you're in a very high vibration, your um, guidance comes through to you and through, um, through strong intention, asking for help from the guidance to make these shifts and changes. Um, and it's all, it's a, a MP3, you can download it easily from the website. And I invite uh, people who might be interested in it to explore this as a possibility. Plus, I have a number of different um, uh, handouts on past lives, on um, spirit releasement, on uh, hypnotherapy, and how it all works. So you can easily download those as well. Plus, you'll hear some uh, information about myself through podcasts that I have uh, listed there. And most importantly, Take a look at what my clients say. There's a portion of the website that includes client testimonials from a variety of clients with a number of different issues that can give you a firsthand glimpse as to what can happen in a session, uh, what sorts of issues can be resolved using hypnosis, especially in working in, in, in uh, concert with your own guidance that is in fact leading the session for us. So take a look at it and give me a call if you have any comments, questions, or whatever. This yeah. offer is standing by. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have to say that in addition to the life between life experience that I had uh, through the session we went through, uh, I remember, too, um, uh, a session where 
uh, I dealt with the passing of my beloved uh, beloved Makushla, my uh, dog, and um, uh, keeping her around for 14 months as she and uh, we struggled to help her and assist her uh, because she lost the use of her hind legs and and all that that entailed and and uh, feeling as though uh, I had really let her down and yet at the same time realizing that uh, when we did release her if you will uh, best way to put it um, she was ready uh, and she understood and she was actually grateful for what we had given her and that as you've already stated uh, even our um, even our non-human uh, connections on this planet here in this realm in this dimension uh, are with us even after uh, can you talk with us a little bit about that in terms of the animals or or is the essence that occupies the animal body is that the same as the essence that occupies the human body the same kind of spirit if you will from what i understand um uh we have we have individual souls if you will but um the spirit world in terms of animals and so on there's a group soul for dogs uh rather than individual souls for each each dog oh in terms of breeds of dogs and so on mm -hmm. but what I have found in my practice is that uh, we can easily invite those pets that have passed on to join us during the session, as you are in a way channeling them. Um, also, from what I understand, when we pass on, our pets are there to greet us mm. as we cross over into the spirit realm. So to know that that loving uh, Tashi, that wonderful dog that you grew up with, is going to be there waiting for you when you make your transition hmm. i i have to say that um in the last let's say last 40 years especially since i've been on what i like to call my search that will not end even even after this lifetime um that i have i have had a number of animals um in my life that you know, uh, my my first dog, Alfie, um, who I found out had to be put down because he was just getting too aggressive with folks. And uh, it's like immediately I knew why, because he was not happy with the situation that he was in, uh, that I wasn't there. Uh, he, he was just unhappy with that. And that's a shame that he lashed out at other people. But, uh, you know, he was upset. Uh, and then, of course, Makushla, who uh, um, uh, was a beautiful white, um, we think it was a, a mixture between a shepherd and a Siberian husky, but she was all white with one of those pink noses, you know, uh, and, um, uh, and, and it's, it's really fascinating. And I've noticed, too, uh, uh, Peter, and I don't know, uh, you have, a, you have a, a dog, a small little dog, too, and I have noticed sometimes when I'm walking along State Street, a matter of fact, this morning, um, I was walking uh, uh, on State Street, and there was this beautiful white dog. It looked a an awful lot like my dog, but more had the head of like a Labrador or, um, you know, that kind of thing, but all white. And it was just laying there with its head on the ground, and as soon as I walked up, it popped its head up and just stared at me. Hmm. And I'm thinking, wow, we must have some connection somewhere. I didn't stop to to pet the dog or anything. I I just looked at the dog and and continued on. Uh, the the owner was there on their phone, but <laughs> but they were just standing there. So you know, um, but I've noticed that with with certain animals that I'll come across in the city, they'll just suddenly perk up, and I have to wonder if maybe uh, they're they're picking up on uh, my love for and concern for the welfare of of these animals uh, um, i i it, it it just really breaks my heart when i see a dog in a car i don't care what the temperature is i don't care if it's 32 degrees outside i it, it's like if you're not gonna take your dog with you don't leave them in the car don't tie them up outside on state street for example i just it's it's like that's not fair because they're sitting there pining for you when you're not there and and that's that just from my perspective i just 
don't like to see that, but I know that these animals are here for us. What do you know about, uh, for example, uh, in the, in this whole conversation about animals, about familiars? You mean how you define familiars? An animal that is there, and they're there specifically for you, uh, and that they're there to sort of help to keep you maybe grounded a little bit, uh, to, to really comfort you when you are going through uh, challenges and struggles, uh, that is there. I mean, they are really bonded, bonded like you wouldn't believe to you, that they would... They would run a hundred miles to get you help, and then co and come back with that help kind of thing, almost, <laughs> almost like Lassie, if you will. Well, I, I believe that that animals are here to teach us unconditional love, and dogs in particular, as well as cats. Mm -hmm. But they, by their very presence, by their very uh, who they are, what they are, they help uh, connect to our hearts and are very intuitive as we've discovered from those stories about dogs that um, follow the, the owners when the owners move to a new location and the dog was left behind somehow eventually finds themselves or itself at the owner's new home. You know, who knew? But they're very special um, animals, if you will, and uh, here to teach us unconditional love. Yeah. Uh, it is such a beautiful thing to see that too. Um, I, I, I'm th I'm thankful that I am not uh, of the ilk, if you will, where uh, I have done something to the animal and then I suddenly immediately regret it. Oh, I wish I hadn't have done that and I've got to go console the animal. Uh, I know that, that when that happens, and, and let's just say maybe it was an accident. Maybe, you know, you bumped into the dog or, the, or what have you. They don't care. I mean, you know, assuming they're not injured or what have you, they're going to come back over and say, hey, hey, it's okay. It's all right. It's good. You know, it was an accident. Nobody, nobody was, <laughs> nobody was injured here. We're all good. Just give me a cookie. <laughs> it's a beautiful thing. I'll tell you the, the, the creatures that we have in our lives, even wild animals that cut, that come across your path. We have deer up on the property. We used to have a flock of turkeys. Uh, of course we have our own chickens as well, but, uh, all the different quail, a, a, a whole flock of quail. Uh, uh, mom and dad and, and the babies just running across the road. That is so much fun to, to, to see and to experience. Uh, it's, it's just extraordinary uh, to be out in nature in that regard. And right now here in Santa Barbara, I'm sure you would agree, Peter, it's a great time to be out in nature. If you can get out to, for example, to the lake or just to a park. Uh, blue skies and everything's green because of the rains that we had in uh, December and January. Uh, just fantastic. And uh, so I would encourage everybody. How about that aspect of our lives in terms of helping us to stay balanced? Uh, your thoughts about uh, the natural world's importance in our sustaining our lives, our well-being. Absolutely. We're not here to be living our lives completely at our desks. Oh, please get out into the world, have experiences, because we're here to experience life, not just the office um, and or just the family, but to get out into nature and to, because nature is here a, a bountiful resource for us to experience even more of life, the beauty, the, the, the uh, colors, the uh, uh, temperatures, whatever enjoy it <laughs> that's why we're here yeah well now um i want to ask you uh, uh one final question before we wrap things up here um and final question for this session because i know we'll have you back again but who uh, and, and i'm not asking for a name or anything but who is or what is peter wright's hypnotherapist or his uh, um, balancing facilitator, if you will. How, how, who, uh, how do you, because you're, you're a very optimistic and bubbly individual. Um, I've never known a time when you haven't uh, had a little laugh in your, in your voice or what have you. Um, but I'm, again, we all have our ups and downs. I'm just curious, who, who, is, uh, who is your therapist? Um, I'm very optimistic, as you've said, but I'm, I'm looking at, at, being of service to others, opening my heart to the world in a way that can um, help others as well as help myself. 
So I think I just, I look to uh, whatever the creator, I don't know, I'm not, I'm not particularly religious, mm -hmm. but I'm very open through meditation, through connecting with guidance as a way to keep me on the straight and narrow, always asking for help mm. because help's all around, but help cannot help us as much as unless we ask for it. So I invite all those who are watching or listening to this to consider through their heart, not the head. The head doesn't know. The head's bound to the third dimension. The heart is open to the fifth dimension, all that's available to us. So to ask through your heart for what you want, then express gratitude, and then get out of the way. <laughs> and through that, good things can come your way. And that's a hard one sometimes for a lot of us to get out of the way. I, st I always love this phrase, <clears throat> become part of the process. Don't try to control the process. Well said. Yeah. Uh, Peter Wright is my guest, and you are listening to Tell Me Your Story. I'm Richard Dugan, your host, and we're talking with a hypnotherapist here in Santa Barbara, Peter Wright, and we encourage you to get in touch with him. Uh, Peter, I want to thank you so much for joining us here on the program and sharing your insights about uh, the, all of the aspects of hypnotherapy. Is there one particular aspect that you like uh, about this process and about what you, uh, what you are in service uh, to people for? Is there a particular aspect of it that just really jumps out for you there's a man I, oh great i get to do this or or what have you i think for me it is working with clients who are stuck who can't seem to move forward um so by working with them we invite their guidance to come forth through them because the guidance knows exactly what wants to happen and is eager to encourage the client to make shifts changes through our session that can quickly quickly help them get back on the right track. So for me, that's one of the uh, joys I get from working with, with so many different clients. Well, again, Peter, I want to thank you so much for, uh, for sharing with us here on the program today. Thank you for having me. I do have three final questions for you as we wrap up our program, uh, but I want to remind you listening and watching that you are listening to and watching Tell Me Your Story, new paradigms for a new world as we give you choices and knowledge of those choices to help make your dreams come true. And we are here on Sundays at 7 a.m. and 7 p.m., Monday mornings at 1 a.m., Wednesday mornings at 9 a.m. with a special edition of Tell Me Your Story. And we are podcasting uh, as well at richarddugan.com with the podcasts, but also SoundCloud, iTunes, TuneIn Radio, Spotify, Stitcher, Player FM, Blueberry, iHeartRadio, Amazon Music, and many other locations. And by the way, with those live broadcasts, we stream those at richarddugan.com. The YouTube channel, Tell Me Your Story, Richard Dugan, is also available to you where you can watch these interviews. And of course, uh, through all of these, we will be linked to Peter's website as we are linked to all of our guests' websites so that you can find out more from, uh, from our guests, including Peter Wright. And uh, we encourage you to do so by going to his website, which is in Insights from within, insightsfromwithin.com. You can give him a ring at 805-770-5200, 805-770-5200, or email him, pqwright at aol.com. That's pqwright at aol.com. We also ask that if you're able to do so, uh, you'd like to, if you'd like to become a part of the work that we are doing and financially support this work, we would greatly appreciate that by sending uh, through PayPal that's for your security as well as ours and when you do that they're going to ask you for an email address for the receiver in this case that would be tell me your story uh, so the email address is Richard at richarddugan.com that's Richard at richarddugan.com and please participate in the decade of perfect vision where we encourage you to go within go within for those insights that's where you're going to get 2020 vision it's it's going to be perfect vision for you. I would never presume that my intuition is going to give any information to Peter. That is not what my intuition is for. My intuition is not to tell Peter, oh, Peter, God told me to tell you. Eh, no, 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 no. Peter has a direct line. He does not need mine. Um, but I, I've often said this too, Peter. <laughs> <laughs> that that the uh, uh, that the divine can contact me collect I will take the call 
okay? Uh, but uh, that's there for me, just as your intuition, your insight is there for you. So we encourage you to participate in this decade of uh, perfect vision, the 2020s. With that, we start out, um, as I've jokingly said, this is the lightning round of Tell Me Your Story, the game show, where we ask the three final questions. And the first of those three is, who is Peter Wright? Peter Wright is an open-hearted individual who is eager to be of support to those who are blocked, who are looking to move forward in their lives. What is it that you hope to or want to achieve through the work that you are doing now? To be of service, as I said earlier, to be of support to those who turn to me for assistance. And finally, what is your life's purpose? To help my soul evolve, to help to forgive myself and love myself and forgive others and love others as well so that I can eventually continue to grow as a, as a soul. Well, with that, Peter, again, thank you so much for joining us. And I thank you for listening and watching Tell Me Your Story, New Paradigms for a New World as we give you choices and knowledge of those choices to help make your dreams come true. And until our next broadcast, podcast, videocast, love to love.